This is meteorologist Mark Mulner, and as always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern and Hurricane Eastern. We have Sam to talk about in the Atlantic. Tropical storm rapidly becoming a hurricane will become a major hurricane by later in the weekend into next week. So watch for that. I'll break all the model data down for you and show you where I think Sam's heading and if Sam's going to affect any sort of land. And the North Atlantic, we're watching that system that could become our next name system. I'll break that all down for you. We all have this system in the Northeast. How will it affect New England for the end of the week here? I'll break down all the effects from flash flooding and severe weather, and I'll go over a very fall-like pattern will be setting in. Just how fall will it be like? I'll show you a departure from average as well. And I am working on my 2021-2022 winter weather outlook, so watch for that in the coming weeks here. I am working on that. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell button so you're alerted when I come out with one of these videos. Question or comment in the comment section down below. Smash the like button, and guess what? There are timestamps if you wish to skip ahead. Let's get right on into it. All right, here's Sam. Uh, we're going to be watching this storm for quite some time. Uh, but you see it becomes a hurricane, of course, by the weekend here, strengthening to a major hurricane late weekend. This could develop even quicker than is indicated here. Definitely looking at between 125, 145 mile per hour winds. Um, could overshoot this as well as the system gets in a very good environment for strengthening. But you notice the cone of uncertainty includes the northern islands. I am not ready to take the islands out of this cone of uncertainty. Um, and I'm going to go over the, the models. I know a lot of people are following the GFS uh, CMC model, but we're going to take a look at the Euro as well. And there's something in the Euro that's worth mentioning, as well as in the other models as well. So we'll break that down for you here. All right, taking a look at the tropics here. Uh, we have Sam continuing out there in the Atlantic. And I did want to make mention here, and I am going to show you this on the Euro um, versus the GFS and Canadian um, taking a look at where Sam's headed, it's going to move just north of the islands here, but I do have two of the red arrows here. Uh, you have the first arrow, which is more likely to happen in, in the direction of Bermuda or just east of Bermuda. And then you have that other, the Euro solution that potentially takes the storm more of a westerly component, uh, on a stronger high pressure system. So we'll have to see what wins out here. This is the big if, since it's so far out, we have a lot of time to watch this. Also, we have that 70% uh, chance of a system developing just west of the Azores here on that base of that trough. And we have the next system that could develop just south of the Cape Verde Islands. We'll watch that system as well. 30 to 40% chance of development. And take a look at the infrared satellite Gulf of Mexico. You have lots of sinking air here in the northern Gulf, so not much happening. There is that frontal boundary. It's a stalled out stationary front, so we'll have to watch for any persistent shower and thunderstorm activity. But at the moment, I don't see that happening. But we'll watch over the next five or six days here. This is the time of year where we can get spin-ups here off of these frontal boundaries. And then taking a look at the rest of the Atlantic here, look at that. There's Sam. A uh, pretty large system there. So Sam's really going to get going here. There's the remnants of Peter being sheared apart here, but there's that feature southwest of Bermuda here that we'll have to watch for potential development. And here out off the coast of Africa, we'll have to watch for development as well. The intertropical convergence zone is really remaining active this time of year. All right, so taking a look at model analysis for the tropical Atlantic, we're going to start with the GFS here. This is going to get us all to the same point on these models from the GFS, CMC, and the Euro. So, starting off with your uh, Friday here. This is uh, Sam, right down here, becoming a hurricane. And Sam is what we're going to really focus on. These other systems are pretty much minute at this point. Um, we do have that disturbance east of Bermuda, as well as that disturbance in the North Atlantic. And we'll be watching for this potential system developing behind Sam. But as we put uh, Sam into motion here, yeah, you see that next system behind Sam there start to develop by uh, early next week, right around Tuesday. That's why I said three to five days. But then Sam's really developing pretty well here on the GFS, staying pretty far to the south, strong high to the northeast here. And as we put Sam into motion, the GFS is pretty adamant about keeping Sam just north of the Windward and Leeward Islands here and north of the Virgin Islands, northeast of Puerto Rico at this point. We have that strong high pressure here as indicated by um, the GFS and troughiness here along the northeast coast of North America here. 
And this is by about the time early Thursday of next week. Now, this is where we start to get outside our envelope of comfortability here. Um, the system starts to move ever so slightly um, around this high-pressure system, which is very strong. There is that next system trying to push into the high-pressure system, but not making much headway. Systems are moving very slow at this point, just east of Bermuda by this point next uh, Saturday, so next weekend. Got this trough way back here in North America, but as you see, there's no troughiness here in the East Coast. By this point, the NAO index will be becoming negative, which I'm going to talk about. As you know, well know, that uh, promotes very, very bad steering currents, not just not a lot of steering to, to be had here. So watch as I put this into motion here. This is getting way outside the envelope here. But I want to show you what could happen here. High pressure, strengthening. Very, very blocky pattern here. Look at this. There's just no steering currents. And watch what it does. It does the left hook, the left curve, into parts of Nova Scotia or even into eastern Maine here. So this is... Uh, this is something we got to watch here. Now, what's the CMC doing? We put it into motion here for middle part of the weekend. There's Hurricane Sam. And we put it into motion here. We get that next system developing behind it here. Uh, Sam just northeast of the islands here. Now, I'll take a look at this. We put it into motion. Very similar to the GFS. Brings it up closer to Bermuda by next weekend. And then pushing it... Of course, we don't get to see here uh, just how far, but in this general vicinity of the GFS. And if we go back here, there's another system trying to form on the Canadian down here, and there's that system behind kind of pushing to the northeast. So here's the arrow. Here's what I really wanted to show you. This is really differing from both the GFS and the CMC model. If you take a look at this, there's Sam. This is by next Tuesday. Got the next disturbance behind Sam. Put it into motion. Take a look at this. Scraping the northern islands here. Taking a more southerly track. Keeping this high pressure system much stronger. And then look at this. Bringing it just east of the Bahamas by next Saturday morning. Keeping a much different track here. And by this point, where the GFS would have Sam up in this area of Nova Scotia or Eastern Maine, at this point, the Euro has literally Sam just sitting right off the coast to the eastern United States. This is why, at this point, it's anybody's game. We have to continue to watch this, because this is going to be a long, drawn-out system with very weak steering currents, and it's going to be a very slow mover. All right, and I briefly wanted to show you the NAO index. It really becomes, starts to become a big factor this time of year. We're pretty positive right now, just slightly positive, more positive than we have been in quite some time. But it is going to fall off a cliff here later on in September into early October, and it really starts to diverge here come the first and second week of October. I wanted to make note of this because any sort of tropical system that we have along the East Coast will have the potential to really stall, retrograde, meander, and it won't have a quick exit to the northeast, so that could potentially lead to potential flooding problems. And Robert Stone here, uh, always got some interesting photos in his travels. Beautiful blue sky across Ferdonia this past weekend as he was waiting. And look at this rainbow he captured the other day um, in Dunkirk, New York. Look at this beautiful capturing. All of this colors, uh, the way the sky is, the lower sun angle this time of morning. It says in the morning hours, this is a great way to start your day here. Look at this beautiful footage here. Nice captures here, Roberts. It's almost like a uh, a double rainbow here. So uh, nice captures here. And uh, wow, look at that. That is nice. And look at his garden. Just exploding with all the weather, all the rainfall, all the sunshine. Uh, look at that. You can't get much better than that. Almost looks like springtime here. So this is very nice captures there, Robert. Thank you. Taking a look at the upper air pattern for North America, 
Uh, we have the reversal pattern. We have a ridge kicking in out west and a trough finally kicking in here across the east. This is not a unsettled type of trough, though. This is more of a cooler weather type trough. It will start to feel really fall-like here uh, come the weekend into early next week. So lots of 60 degree readings to be had. A ridge strengthening out west here. We'll have to watch the tropics as well. And the Atlantic watching Sam. And for your Friday here across the northeast, we finally have the front moving to the east. So it allows places like Scranton, Binghamton, Harrisburg, Atlantic City, State College, Syracuse, Albany just to dry out. We are still dealing with some rainfall over by Boston, Portland, and Bangor, Maine here. Uh, Maine seeing pretty much the lion's share of the rain continuing on Friday, but thankfully that front will finally be on the move here, so we'll clear it out for a nice weekend. Look at that. 68 in Binghamton, 63 in State College. It's getting a bit chilly here in western New York and western Pennsylvania. Feeling it is fall, though. Friday across the southeast, TGIF. Look at this. A very nice day. In the southern Florida area, the front still hasn't cleared you. Uh, just a 20 to 30 percent chance of a shower or thunderstorm, especially in the afternoon. But for the most part, look at that. The southeast is enjoying lower humidity. Look at that. Even down into the upper 70s, low 80s from New Orleans over to Panama City. 75 in Atlanta. This is really beautiful for this time of year. Get out there and enjoy it. And taking a look at your Saturday here for the northeast. For the most part, it's beautiful in uh, the central and southern sections. It's here in northern New England, especially into northern New York and southern Ontario and Quebec. We have that chance of showers uh, continuing. This front uh, was moving pretty good here on Friday, but it will begin to stall out here in eastern New England. And that will be the focal point, especially later in the day as you have that cold pool of air aloft. We'll get some instability and some showers will develop in places like Boston, Concord, Portland, Bangor, Burlington, and into the St. Lawrence River Valley. Uh, the rest of the Northeast looking really nice, though. Look at that. Binghamton, 72, 70 in Scranton, 70 in State College, 74 in Harrisburg, and 75 in New York. Get out there and enjoy it. Nice fall. And Saturday, beautiful day again. Uh, the front still hasn't cleared South Florida here. Another 20 to 30 percent chance, a little bit further south. So Tampa clearing out a bit and Miami staying in the hazy, hot and humid conditions. But look at that. The rest of the southeast picture perfect. 79 Atlanta, Raleigh and Charleston, 84 in Panama City. It's starting to warm back up here back towards the west, though, in Houston, Texas. And taking a look at your Sunday. Look at that. Uh, most of the area will be dry. We will have the instability in northern upstate New York, northern Vermont, New Hampshire, and into Maine uh, later in the day, especially in the afternoon. You get the colder pool air aloft, the warm land, you get some showers activity. Uh, but here across uh, much of uh, the rest of New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, southern New England, Long Island, uh, down into Delaware and Maryland, and eastern Ohio, we're looking pretty good. It's not too bad. 70 in Binghamton, 71 in Scranton. Look at that. 74 in New York. If you can get out there and really enjoy things, this is a beautiful fall day to behold. Blue, beautiful blue skies. And taking a look at your Sunday here across the southeast, another picture-perfect day. Just a chance of a stray shower thunderstorm down along the stalled frontal boundary in the Keys and South Florida around Miami. Uh, over towards Houston as well, there's some uh, some showers and thunderstorms that could kick up here off the ocean, especially during the afternoon hours. But for the most part, we're clear. 84 in New Orleans and Panama City, 85. Tampa, 90. And look at that inland, 81 in Atlanta. Looking nice. Get out there and enjoy. And taking a look at your Monday here across the Northeast, a case of your Mondays. Looking really nice, crystal clear, blue skies, temperatures into the upper 60s and right around 70. And even some lower 70s over by Lake Erie, Erie, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, Atlantic City and New York City in the mid 70s and Harrisburg as well. Looking very nice. And taking a look at your Monday here, a case of the Mondays across the Southeast, you'll probably want to call out of work. Just like in the northeast there, beautiful wall-to-wall -wall sunshine. Temperatures really nice, too, into the low to mid-80s in most places and near 90. Places like Miami, Tampa, and Houston. We do have that frontal boundary, that stalled-out stationary front across just uh, right south of the Keys there. And then it actually starts to come back north over by Texas. And we'll see that return flow of showers and thunderstorms right around the Houston area and throughout the rest of Texas. And an extended outlook for my hometown viewers, Binghamton to Scranton's upper Susquehanna region of upstate New York, northeast Pennsylvania, 
Wow, I haven't had one of these in a while. Look at that. That's the sun, that big old ball of sunshine there. Look at that from Friday all the way to Tuesday. Very little chances of rain, just a little bit on Tuesday, but look at that. Pretty much crystal clear. This is beautiful fall-like weather. 68, 72, 70, 73, and 72 all the way from Friday to Tuesday. Look at those overnight lows. That's great sleeping weather, too. Getting down to 40 on Saturday. Those of you who are suffering from the allergies that are hoping for a frost or freeze, it hopefully will be around the corner for you because, you know, I'm, there's a lot of us, I know myself included, that really, really would like the ragweed and all that to go away. Um, so hopefully that will come shortly, but there you have it. Beautiful fall-like temperatures. As always, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern and Hurricane Eastern. We'll be transitioning to winter time soon, so I'll be getting working on my winter weather outlook. Uh, don't forget to give my Facebook page some love. It's Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern, also Hurricane Northeastern. Twitter, it's Weather Eastern now. It's not WX Northeastern anymore. It's just Weather Eastern. And don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell button down below. Comment or question, smash the like button, gets the video some love.